This is physical chemistry, part three, quantum chemistry, chapter twenty-two. Quantum states for many electron atoms, section twenty-two point one. Good quantum numbers, terms, levels, and states. Good quantum numbers are associated with the operators that commute with. The Hamiltonian of the quantum mechanical system. So, what does this mean? The operators that commute with the Hamiltonian means these operators and the Hamiltonian share a complete list of eigenfunctions, and the corresponding eigenvalues are the values of the corresponding physical properties. And good quantum numbers are associated with those operators. That means it's possible to determine the exact value of the corresponding physical properties and the total energy of the system exactly at the same time. Now let me give you a few example. If we have a hydrogen atom, it contains only one electron. We can solve this Schrodinger equation for the one electron system exactly, and also the operators L squared, L z, S squared, S z all commute with H, and therefore the quantum numbers L, L sub z, S, and S sub z. Well, actually, this is M sub L as the quantum number, not S sub z. And over here, the quantum number. Is m sub l, so these four quantum numbers again l m sub l, s m sub s are all good quantum numbers, because one can determine the values of l squared, l z, s squared, s z exactly, as well as the total energy of the system here at the same time. All right, and now I can give you the formula of the angular momentum of the hydrogen atom. You can simply use this equation: the square root of L times L plus one, and then times h bar. That's the、uh, value of the angular、uh, momentum of the electron in the hydrogen atom. When L is zero. The angular momentum is zero. When L is one,、uh, the magnitude of the angular momentum is square root of two times h bar, and we can get these values at the same time as we getting the total energy of the system. So again, that's why we call this L as a good quantum number. Another example. Let's look at the one sulfide electron in the hydrogen atom. And then we have all these、uh, quantum numbers. I forgot to、uh, put in the hydrogen atom here. All right. And then we have the energy. We have、uh, this four good quantum numbers.、Uh, what about the five d beta electron in the hydrogen atom? Well, in this case, we can also determine. The exact value of the angular momentum, its z component, the electron spin, and the z component of electron spin. So, those are all good quantum numbers. I did emphasize it's the hydrogen atom because we can only solve、uh, the Schrodinger equation for the one electron system exactly,、uh, such as hydrogen, helium plus, lithium two plus, etc. Uh, what if we have a helium atom, a lithium atom with two or more electrons?、Uh, we call them many electron atoms.、Uh, in this case, the angular momenta of all these electrons are coupled. The spins of all electrons are coupled.、Uh, and remember, the angular momentum of an electron has three directions, so it's a vector. So you are not doing the sum of scalars; you are doing the sum of vectors.、Uh, if you have three electrons, you need to sum up three vectors.
over here. Uh, same here. Uh, this is the uh, electron spin vector of individual electrons, and we sum it up. Uh, we get uh, the sum of the spin of all electrons. Okay. Now, for a many electron atom, it is uh, impossible to determine the angular momentum or spin of a individual electron uh, at the same time as uh, determining the total energy. So, in a many electron atom, the values of L and S of an individual electron are not good quantum numbers. However, the quantum numbers associated with this uppercase L operator and this uppercase S operator, they are co a good quantum numbers. So basically, you need to uh, sum up the L vectors to get a operator with good quantum numbers. You need to sum up all the electron spin vectors to get a operator associated with good quantum numbers. And good quantum numbers, again, that means we can uh, determine its corresponding uh, physical properties exactly. Uh, now let's look at the Z components. Uh, we have similar equations, so here and here. Uh, the Z component is uh, constrained in the Z direction only, but uh, it still has a direction, positive versus negative. Right, so you can have like yeah, you know, each bar versus negative each bar in the z direction. So I still consider that with a direction, all right, but not like a three-dimensional vector, which clearly has three components uh, in the x, y, and z directions. Uh, now we have the quantum numbers here: uh, uppercase m sub l, uppercase m sub s. Uh, over here, this is a sum of scalars, a sum of numbers. So really you just sum up the Z components of individual electrons. Uh, same here. So these two equations are easier, okay? You do not need to deal with the vectors. But again, I mean, if you just imagine the sum of two vectors, and if you focus on the Z direction, well, the Z component of the sum is indeed the sum of the Z components of these two vectors. So it's simple addition of two scalars uh, in that case. Uh, another definition, uh, atomic term. This is the most important definition in this chapter. Atomic term is a group of states that has the same L and S value. And you have to pay attention to L and S. They are uppercase. Okay, again, uppercase L and S. Those are not lowercase L and S. Lowercase L and S are referred to a single electron. Uppercase L and S are referring to a group of electrons. Occasionally, it's one, but in, generally, uh, in general, it's more than one. Okay, it's usually more than one. Now I want to show you the sum of the vectors using this picture. Uh, this is a vector, another vector, a third vector. So the sum of these three vectors is this. All right, so you need to learn how to sum up the vectors. It's a lot easier to sum up the Z components. Uh, this is a total Z component, and uh, this is just uh, the Z components of vector 1, vector 2, vector 3. So over here, if you just look at the Z component, it's the sum of these three scalars. But if you're looking at the sum of factors with directions, now you can see, well, this is a bit more complicated. Uh, if you have a completely filled subshell, for example, helium has a uh, completely uh, filled subshell. 1s orbital is completely filled. Or if you're looking at beryllium, uh, 1s and 2s are completely filled, or if you're looking at neon, right? Uh, those equations are always true. Uh, this is very helpful because uh, now if you're looking at the sodium atom, uh, we do not have to worry about the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 
uh, orbitals in sodium. We just need to focus on the 3s1 orbital in sodium uh, because this is the only um, subshell that's not completely filled. Oh, by the way, you do not have to worry about those empty subshells either, okay? If they are empty, I mean, just we do not have to take them into account. So again, we just look at the partially filled subshells, right? We just examine the uppercase L and S of those uh, electrons in the partially filled uh, subshells. For example, if you look at boron, we'll just look at this 2p1. Uh, in boron, because there's only one electron uh, to consider, uh, again, this is uh, the 2p orbitals. There are th three 2p orbitals. Uh, and this electron can be alpha spin or beta spin, right? So now let's look at the um, possible values of the z components of the angular momentum. So again, this is the sum, but since we have only one electron, um, the sum of just one item is just itself. So it's possible to have uh, this L sub z, the z component of the angular momentum can be negative one, zero, and plus one. The possible values of the z component of the electron spin uh, is uh, negative one half or positive half, all right? Uh, and um, Oh, uh, there's one thing I, I probably should make it more accurate here. Uh, this is not very accurate. Uh, these two are operators and these are quantum numbers, so I need to kind of somehow separate them. So over here I need to enter this insert equation. Uh, I need to use the notation for the quantum numbers, m sub l, and this is now correct. Um, but we're talking about many electrons, so I'm going to use the uppercase L. All right? So this is correct. And I will do the same thing here. And this is uppercase S. We're talking about a group of electrons, although in this particular case, there's only one electron. Um, now we have three possible values for M sub L, two possible values for M sub S. Uh, there are six different possible microstates, okay? So different combinations. M sub L can be negative one, uh, zero, or positive one. Again, I'm changing this lowercase l to uppercase l because we are talking about a group of electrons, although in this group there's only one electron. And uh, over here I need to use M sub S here, M sub S. All right, so M sub S here. Uh, it can be negative half or positive half. So maybe I should uh, just make it more clear. There are six microstates. Uh, given the above six uh, possible microstates, we have uh, this different values for M sub L, this different uh, values for M sub S. And given this possible values for M sub L, uh, negative 1, 0, 1, uh, we know L is just 1. Uh, remember, in general chemistry, you learned the rule. So M sub L is uh, supposed to be uh, ranging from negative L to L. So we can go backward. So if you know L, and then you know M sub L can be negative L, negative L plus 1, and then dot, 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 all the way to positive L. And we can also go backward. If you see a series of numbers, okay, with a interval of one as the range of m sub l, and then you can see l, uh, the maximum value of m sub l is l, all right? Or you can look at the most negative m sub l and change its sign, and that's also l. So if you see negative one, zero, one, as the possible values for M sub L, then I know L is 1. If you see a different range from negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, I know L is 3. So we can go uh, in both directions. If you know L, you get the range of M sub L. And if I give you the range of M sub L, you should be able to tell me the value of L. Same for M sub S. 
and s. So if you know this is half, then you know m sub s should be negative half to positive half. All right, so with an interval of one. And also, if I give you a range here, so this is actually a range, and then you should know this number is s. The largest possible value of m sub s is the value of s. All right. Now we have the values for these two quantum numbers, uppercase L, uppercase S. Those are good quantum numbers. And now we need to use notations, all right? When you see uppercase L is equal to 1, uh, the notation is uppercase P, all right? So again, when L is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we have S, P, D, F, G, all right, etc. So we need to replace this L with a symbol P for boron, okay, for boron. Um, 2s plus 1 is a number. So really you need to plug in the value of s and do a little calculation here. So 2 times 1 half plus 1 is 2. Uh, what does that mean? 2s plus 1 is the spin multiplicity. The spin multiplicity. Uh, or the possible values, the number of possible values of m sub s. And you can see there are two possible values. So the spin multiplicity is 2. Uh, again, the total number of microstates. Now we can uh, use the equation to calculate the total number of microstates. 2 times L plus 1 is the multiplicity regarding the angular momentum. 2S plus 1 is the multiplicity regarding the spin. All right. So these two are independent uh, from each other. So 3 times 2 is 6. We have 6 microstates. Now more serious example, carbon. Uh, there are two electrons in the 2p orbitals. Uh, why do we look at this? Uh, two reasons. First, we need to have this group of two electrons to get good quantum numbers. That means we can determine the angular momentum and electron spin of this group of two electrons exactly. That's one. Two, uh, experimentally, uh, people look at the atomic spectrum of carbon and couldn't explain some of the electronic transitions. Uh, later we'll see those transitions are between uh, different atomic terms in carbon. Uh, if you look at this electron configuration of carbon, we focus on this 2p2 uh, subshell and you will be able to get three atomic terms. Uh, the electronic transition that happen in a carbon atom are the transitions between these three atomic terms. So we have to look at this to understand the atomic spectrum of the carbon atom. Now, uh, first let's uh, think about the number of microstates. Uh, the first electron, let's put the first electron in the uh, 2p orbitals. There are six options. Why you have three uh, 2p orbitals? And you can put the electron in any one of the three orbitals. So there are three options. But don't forget about the spin. So this electron can be alpha spin or beta spin. So there are six options for the first electron. Okay. Now because of the uh, Pauli exclusion principle, all because of uh, the quantum mechanical postulate 6. Uh, no two electrons can have the same set of quantum numbers. So if the first electron has six options, the second electron has only five options. All right? And because the two electrons are indistinguishable, we need to divide two factorial on the bottom. So we have uh, 15 microstates. Uh, I can give you another example. Uh, two guests are checking in to a hotel room, and this hotel has uh, a total of six rooms. Uh, the first guest has six options. Uh, the second guest, well, uh, insists to just, you know, live uh, in a room all by him or herself, and then has only five options left. So when we check in two guests into six hotel rooms, 
there are a total of um, 30 options. Now let's say these two guests are indistinguishable. You won't be able to tell the difference between these two guests. And then uh, there are only 15 possible arrangements. So this may sound weird, uh, but I can give you another simple example. Uh, let's say we have two guests again, A and B, uh, occupying three rooms, uh, room one, two, and three. So in room one, two, three, we can have how many arrangements? Well, we can have three times two equals six arrangements. Uh, they are A, B, empty. A, empty, B. B, A, empty. B, empty, A. Finally, empty, A, B. And empty, B, A. So I just uh, told you the six possible arrangements for guests A and B occupying three rooms, one, two, three. Uh, what if I tell you um, these two guests are the same? And we have to label them A and A. And now we have to do 6 over 2 factorial. Uh, there are only three possible arrangements. It's A, A, empty, A, empty, A, and empty, A, A for the three rooms. All right, so that's why. Uh, you can do more practice by yourself. Uh, just putting guests into hotel rooms. Uh, be sure that no two guests occupy the same room. Uh, this is quantum mechanical postulate 6. Now let's write out this uh, 15 microstates. Uh, there's no easy way to uh, list all these microstates uh, accurately, efficiently. It just needs uh, some practice. Uh, but uh, what I do is I try to do this systematically. All right. So first, I put the two electrons uh, in the same atomic orbital. So one, two, three. Uh, the two electrons are in the same orbital. It's fine because they have different spins. They are not sharing the same set of quantum numbers. They have different spins. And then uh, over here from uh, state 4 to state 15, uh, the two electrons occupy uh, different orbitals. So over here, uh, so they occupy uh, this two, and then this two, and then this two, and this two, and then this two, this two, this two, this two. So uh, basically, uh, I'm just uh, having uh, the first guest uh, check into the first room. The second guest check into the second room and third room, you know. Well, just um, you can develop your own algorithm for listing all possible microstates. All right. Uh, does the order matter? No, it does not matter at all. The order of those microstates does not matter at all. Uh, later, we will group some of those uh, microstates into a atomic term. Uh, so first, let's look at the five rows highlighted in yellow. All right, so highlighted in yellow. Uh, why did I choose this five? So first, you need to look for the largest possible value for M sub L. I think uh, among these 15 microstates, the largest possible value is two. And once you see this two, you should look for a series from negative two to two. So I got negative 2, negative 1, and then 0, and 1, and 2. So I got a series of five numbers uh, with the same number of m sub s or the same series of m sub s. In this case, it's a number 0. All right, so that means the range for this m sub s is just 0. 0 is the lower and upper limit for m sub s. M sub L, however, can be from negative 2 to negative 1 to 0 to 1 to 2. So these two ranges suggest the values of S and L. This range 
suggests that s has to be zero, uppercase s has to be zero. This range suggests again in yellow, okay, in yellow, suggests that the value of uppercase L has to be two. So we got our first atomic term. Or simply you can call that just term. Okay? L is two, S is zero. And the symbol for L equals two is D, so we put D here. Uh, the superscript is 2s plus 1, so 2 times s plus 1 is 1, it's a singlet. The beam multiplicity is singlet. Uh, that means the number of possible values of m sub s is 1. Okay, There's only one possible value for m sub s, it's 0. Uh, what about the number of microstates? Well, we know we counted this 5, but also we can do this calculation. 2l plus 1 times 2s plus 1 is 5. And then let's look at the nine rows not highlighted. Uh, they correspond to the 3p term, L is 1, S is 1. Why is that? So after we identify the 1d atomic term, we need to delete this five rows. Okay, just remove those five rows. And then look for the largest value of L in the remaining microstates. Uh, and, and then you get just one. Okay, you get one. So one. And then you look for the series from negative one to zero to one for L. And also when you do that, you need to look at the corresponding series of M sub S. Well in this case M sub S can also be negative one, zero to one. So again you have three possible values for M sub S. You have three possible values for M sub L. Therefore, you have a total of nine microstates. The range for M sub L is negative one, zero, one. The range for M sub L is also negative one, zero, and one. Okay? So that tells us S is one. L is one. And in this case, we say this is a 3P term, a 3P atomic term. When L is 1, the symbol is P. When S is 1, the spin multiplicity is 3. Uh, we're not done yet. 5 plus 9, that's 14. There's one left. It's green. All right, and you look at the green. Uh, you may consider these two numbers as two ranges. The lower limit and the upper limit of this range are both 0. Same here. So L is 0. S is 0. When s is 0, the symbol is s. When s is 0, 2s plus 1 is 1. The spin multiplicity is 1. So uh, you have a 1s atomic term. All right. Unfortunately, we used uh, this uh, uppercase s for two different things. Why is this? When l is 0, uh, when the angular momentum quantum number is 0, the corresponding notation is s, uppercase s. 2, the spin quantum number is also <laughs> uppercase s for a many electron atom. This is uh, unfortunate. So again, uh, you have L is 0, S is 0, so the atomic term is 1s. This s is the symbol that corresponds to L equals 0. And this is the spin quantum number. All right, so this S and this S are different. This S and this S are the same. Now we account for the 15 microstates. 5 plus 9 plus 1, you got 15. Now which atomic term has the lowest energy? Uh, there are rules. There are rules. Rule 1, uh, the lowest energy term is that which has the greatest spin multiplicity. All right, so... Now it's got to be 3p. 3p has the lowest energy. Uh, rule 2. Uh, what if you have two terms with the same spin multiplicity? You look for the greatest L. Okay, you look for greatest L. So if you compare this to uh, 1d has lower energy. All right. Uh, in tra transition metal chemistry, you will see exceptions to rule 2. Okay. Rule 1 is always true. Rule 2, um, 
Occasionally, there are exceptions. So basically, we have three atomic terms、uh, for carbon, and in general, for、uh, any atoms with two electrons in the three p orbitals. So it's for carbon, it's for silicon, and it's also for oxygen two plus. Why? Because there are two electrons in the three two p orbitals. And experimentally, we see one, two, three, three atomic terms, three p, one d. And one s. Now you see some subscripts.、Uh, they are called levels. We'll talk about this later. Again, this is uh, the uh, different energies of the three atomic terms: three p, one d, one s. Three p has the greatest spin multiplicity. Therefore, three p has the lowest energy. And then you compare one s and one d.、Uh, they have the same spin multiplicity, but this d term has a greater l. Now let's look at an excited carbon、uh, asterisk atom、uh, in which we excite electron to the three s orbital. So we need to look at this two subshells.、Uh, there are twelve microstates because、uh, in this two p orbital you have six options in the three s orbital. You have only two options, so I'll let you look at the table and see if you can、uh, work out on this table. And、um, if you can,、uh, let's see if you can write out all twelve、uh, microstates and see if you can group these microstates into a three p term and a one p term. So in this case, there are two atomic terms. And you can tell the three p term has lower energy than the one p term. Um, over here, I'm just、uh, listing, assuming over here、uh, the electron in the three s orbital. Is alpha electron. The electron in the three s orbital is beta electron, and、uh, these numbers are actually the quantum numbers for the electron in the two p orbital. Nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen. Oh,、uh, you can、uh, look at this table and pause here and see if you can construct the same table、uh, with the same twelve macrostates and see if you can come up. With the same atomic terms here,、uh, nitrogen. Nitrogen is、uh, even more complicated.、Uh, we have three electrons in the two p orbital. The first electron has six options. The second five options. The third electron four options, and the electrons are indistinguishable. So we need to divide this by three factorial. So again, if we label the three electrons, we call them A, B, C, and then. We put them in the rooms, and、uh, and then rooms. Let's say we put them in room alpha, beta, and gamma, whatever. And then you can have A B C, A C B, B C A, B A C, and C A B, C B A. Are counted as one arrangement、uh, if A, B, and C are identical to each other. So all the six arrangements I mentioned. A B C A C B B A C B C A C A B C B A become A A A when A equals B equals C, right? So just、uh, this six arrangements are all just A A A if B and C are indistinguishable from A. So now we can write out the twenty microstates again.、Uh, you should、uh, develop. Your own mechanism of、uh, assigning those electrons. I think what I did is this: I fully occupy the first atomic orbital here, and then the second one, and then the third one, and then allow one electron to occupy、e uh, each two p orbital. Okay, so now I got twenty microstates, and I need to group them into atomic terms.、Uh, what I did is I look for the largest m sub l. Oh, by the way, m sub l is the sum of the individual lowercase m sub l. So when I look at the table, the largest value is two, 
and I see two of them, one, two. They correspond to different uh, values of M sub L, so that's why we highlighted uh, 10 microstates well, with yellow. So this number can be 2, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 2. Uh, M sub S can be negative half and positive half. So five options regarding M sub L, two options regarding M sub S. Uh, the total possible arrangements is 10. So we have 10 microstates, 10 rows, 10 microstates correspond to this 2D atomic term. We delete this 10 rows and look for the largest L again. Uh, we find a 6 rows. Uh, those are not highlighted. So th these are not highlighted. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. They correspond to L equals 1. S is half. So the atomic term is 2P. And finally, the remaining 4 rows. Okay. You get 4S. In this case, L is just 0. S can be negative 1.5, negative 0.5, positive 0.5, and positive uh, 1.5. The green ones, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right? Okay, now one question here. Uh, is there any difference between this one and this one? Uh, no, there's no difference between this one and this one. There's no difference. Uh, you can highlight this with yellow and this with green. That should not affect your determination of the atomic terms. All right, and I want to emphasize again: this table is for us to list all possible uh, micro states, and we group this micro states to obtain the value of this uppercase L and the uppercase S. Uh, nothing else. They do not really have corresponding quantum mechanical uh, wave functions. It's just a tool for us to determine L and S, and then atomic terms. Okay, uh, what if we have D electrons? Uh, it gets really complicated, but it's doable. Uh, what if we have P4 and P5? P5 is the same as P1, P4 is the same as P2. Uh, the reason is this, when you have P4, you can imagine not having four electrons, but having two holes. All right, so you can imagine uh, four guests occupying six rooms, but also you can imagine we arrange two holes, two vacancies uh, in the six hotel rooms. Uh, how do you arrange two vacancies uh, in six rooms? It's the same as uh, arranging two guests in the six rooms. Now let's look at the levels. So sometimes you see a subscript here. J, uh, a, a number here, and this J um, will tell you the energy levels uh, because uh, each atomic term may further split into energy levels. Uh, J is a vector. J is a vector. So L corresponds to a vector, the angular momentum vector. S is the spin vector. So J is the sum of the L vector and the spin vector. Together, you get another vector. It's J. Uh, the quantum number j can be from uh, the absolute value of L minus s. So this is just the difference between these two. Uh, all the way to L plus s. All right? Remember, L and s cannot be negative. All right? L and s cannot be negative. All right? So this is the possible uh, values for j. Again, I'm using this bold font to emphasize those are, I'm talking about the vectors here. L is the angular momentum vector of many electrons. S is also a vector of the spin of uh, the group of electrons. Uh, J is the L vector plus the S vector. All right. Uh, okay, J is called the total angular momentum quantum number. Uh, it's a little confusing. Why total here? Well, actually, this total means uh, we sum up the uh, orbiting motion and spinning motion of a group of electrons, all right, of a group of electrons. So if you look at the carbon, uh, there are two electrons that occupy the 2p orbital. So we consider these two electrons as a group of electrons. And we look at the angular momentum of these two electrons, 
and the spin of the two electrons. Um, they are both vectors. The sum of these two vectors give you the J vector. Now let's make it more complicated. This J is a vector, and then it must have a Z component, X component, and Y component. So this M sub J is the Z component of J. M sub J can be negative J all the way to J. And also, we can have corresponding uh, multiplicity here. Uh, the multiplicity is just the possible, the number of possible values. Over here, you can tell uh, there are two j plus one possible values, and it are also correspond to the number of microstates associated with a energy level denoted by quantum number j. So you see a j, and then the multiplicity is two j plus one. All right, so now let's uh, summarize the analysis. Uh, when you have a uh, carbon atom, you write out the electron configuration, and you see uh, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Uh, don't worry about the completely filled subshells. So just look at 2p2. You have n, you have l. And this 2p2 electron configuration carbon uh, can be determined uh, the atomic terms of the 2p2 electron configuration can be determined. All right, I think we determined those terms to be 3p, 1d, and 1s. All right. Uh, from here to here, we assume electron, electron repulsion and indistinguishability are included. Uh, when that's the case, the electron configuration splits into three terms. Uh, now, if we look at the so-called spin orbit interaction, that means if we can sum up the angular momentum and the spin of the group of electrons, we get J. And that gives us the levels. So J is the levels. And each j has 2j plus 1 possible values for m sub j. Okay? For m sub j. So when j is 3, then m sub j is negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. The multiplicity is 7. All right? And finally, if we put this carbon atom into a external magnetic field, uh, I want to show you the picture here. So this are the three atomic terms of carbon, of carbon or oxygen two plus. Same thing. Uh, they have the same two uh, p two subshell. All right. Three p, the lowest energy. One d, one s. Uh, if you look at the high resolution atomic spectrum of carbon you will see this 3p further splits into 3p0, 3p1, and 3p2. 0, 1, and 2 are the values of j. And j is the sum of the angular momentum uh, vector and the spin vector. So if you look closer, this atomic term splits into three levels. And then if you look closer uh, and see the fine structure of this 3p2, this one will split into five different energy levels in an external magnetic field. You need a magnetic field, all right? They correspond to m sub j equals negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So further splitting here. And this five levels in the external magnetic field correspond to five microstates. So actually, you have one microstate here, three microstates here, five microstates here. Together, you have nine microstates. Over here, you have five microstates. M sub J can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. One microstate. Again, 1 plus 5 plus 9, you get 50 microstates. All right, so I just explained this M sub J over here. If you put the carbon atom in an external magnetic field, you will be able to observe um, in the same atomic term, same level, 
you can have different M sub J. Uh, again, this is the uh, experimental observation. So if you have the ato uh, atomic spectrum of carbon atom, uh, you see a transition from here to here. Uh, you see transition from here to here. We can determine the energy difference. Uh, these numbers are in wave numbers. So to get the energy, you need to multiply this by Hc, by H, the Planck constant, and C, the speed, speed of light. And if you look closer, you can see this atomic term splits into three levels, and there's a difference between these three levels. It's called a spin-orbit interaction. And now if you put this in an external magnetic field, it will further split into five levels. All right, but don't worry about that too much in undergraduate PCAM. Uh, why does this atomic term not split? Um, well, there's only one level here. One term, one level. One term, one level. Uh, this is because in this case, L is 2, S is 0. So L minus S is 2. L plus S is also 2. So there's only one possible value for J. Over here, L is uh, 0. S is 0, so J is from L minus S to L plus S, it's just 0. In this case, L is 1, S is 1, so L minus S is 0, L plus S is 2, so you can find a range from 0 to 2. All right, J can be from 0 to 2. Uh, now rule 3 about the levels, uh, we can also order other levels. If you have a Unfilled subshell, uh, which is exactly or more than half full, uh, the level with the highest J has the lowest energy. If the unfilled subshell is less than half full, uh, the level with uh, the lowest J value has the lowest energy. Uh, why is that? So over here, remember when you have this situation, you're just uh, uh, considering arranging guests into the hotel rooms. Over here, you are arranging the holes, the vacancies in the rooms. Uh, that's why you have different uh, conclusions here. Physically, it's just talking about the interaction between two magnets. Uh, one originates from the orbit motion of the electron. The other originates from the spin motion of the electron. Now you can imagine when the two magnets are arranged in the opposite directions, they attract each other, which lower the energy. If you have two magnets uh, put together uh, in parallel, they repel each other. Uh, the North Pole and uh, the North Pole uh, repel each other. You have a higher energy. So now for the uh, carbon atom, uh, there are three atomic terms. Uh, this 3p has the highest spin number or spin multiplicity. Um, so this 3 is spin multiplicity. And therefore, 3p has lower energy than the other two. And then 1d and 1s. 1d has a higher angular momentum, quantum number L. So 1d has a lower energy than 1s. But again, in transition metal chemistry, you may see exceptions to this. Don't be surprised. Now if we look at J, okay, so S equals 1, L equals 1, so J can be from L minus S to L plus S. So this J can be 0, 1, or 2. J cannot be negative. That's why I put a uh, absolute value sign here. All right, so it's three different levels, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, in this case, um, the P orbitals are less than half so maybe I should change this and that's why 3p0 has the lowest energy uh, for oxygen atom oxygen atom uh, the electron configuration is 2p4 all right 2p4 uh, you get the same atomic terms same levels um, but uh, in the oxygen atom, uh, 3p sub 2 has the lowest energy. All right.